Hello everybody. Today we'll be going over our point of sale system that we developed for implementation in a small bookstore named Better Books. They essentially needed a system that could handle inventory management and financial reports, as well as having a simpler way to conduct transactions and sales. My name is Carter and I'll be telling you all about the planning stage of our system development. Our team roles were myself as the business analyst, Jacob as the systems analyst, Zachary as the infrastructure analyst, Luke as the change management analyst, and Nico as the project manager. We used the Scrum methodology within our system because of the short time frame involved, the scale of the project, and because it allows for quick adaptations when changes need to be made to the system. We used an app called Slack to conduct stand-up meetings throughout the process too. The business need for the system is to upgrade from a pen and pencil operation to a cloud-based point of sale system. The value added by the system will be sales reporting, inventory management, and customer satisfaction. The business requirements are that the system must track all sales, provide low inventory alerts, track customer data, and run various types of reports. This will increase productivity by 35% and improve report accuracy by 8%. Special issues we anticipate are needing training on the point of sale system for employees and the need to install a wireless network. Feasibility analysis guides the organization in determining whether or not to proceed with a project. Our financial feasibility shows that overall we can expect a 20% return on investment. And here our Gantt chart plans out the three sprints uh, that it took to implement the system. Our first sprint started in early February and ended uh, on the 21st of February. The second sprint went until March 13th and the last sprint ended around April 3rd. Hi, my name is Jacob Sorensen and I will be telling you about our analysis stage of development. The following slides consist of the techniques and strategies we use to gather our system requirements, the functional and non-functional requirements, five use case diagrams and two use case descriptions, an activity diagram, a class diagram, and a sequence diagram. The strategy we use for gathering system requirements is problem analysis. The techniques we used were interviews, questionnaires, and observations. The owner and manager were interviewed about sales reporting features, inventory tracking, and customer tracking features. The floor staff were asked open-ended questions about the day-to-day -day problems they faced. Questionnaires were used to gather recommendations from customers and observations were used to confirm any information gathered from the questionnaires and interviews because it can be easy to forget or misremember how business is normally ran during interviews and quick questionnaires. Our functional requirements are mostly based on inventory and stock management, billing and order processing, sales monitoring and reports, and customer management and the loyalty program. Our non-functional requirements include operational, performance, security, and cultural requirements. The use case diagrams were chosen from the functional requirements of our system, which help to understand our system at a very high level. They explain what the main functions of our system are and the way the various users interact with it. The use case diagrams consist of searching stock, alerting for low inventory, ordering inventory, adding and removing stock, and printing receipts. The use case descriptions included provide a more in-depth explanation of our use case diagrams. Included use case descriptions are ordering inventory and printing receipts. The activity diagram models the details of the use case that describes how the system is used to order inventory. Class diagrams show the various classes of our system and the relationships between them. The classes of our system are employees, items for sale, customers, inventory, customer data and loyalty points, billing, and sales reports. Sequence diagrams detail the order of functions that an actor performs within the system. 
The sequence diagram includes details of how an employee searches for stock. Hello, everybody. My name is Zach Hagberg, and I'll be telling you about the design stage of our system development. Now, the following slides consist of putting together the design phase by linking together the user interface, database design, physical layer specification, and the programming structure. It describes how the design strategy chosen will help build and implement the system. As you can see, for our design strategy, we're using a packaged point of sale system. Since we're a small mom and pop shop, there's no point developing a brand new system that we created from squares, you know, ground zero, square one, however you want to say it. We can use what's already developed out there and fine tune it to our specific needs. Next is the method specification. They are explicit instructions on how to write the code to implement the methods. These will then be transferred to programmers to implement. This specific method specification talks about the method for selling items. As you can see, these are fairly detailed, I would say, and tell you exactly what the method can and will do. Next is database design. It includes a, a relational database that will manage data for the system. It's necessary because it manages how data is stored and handled by the program, especially when you're a uh, business that deals with sales or customers, you're gonna need a database and a reliable one at that. And as you can see, we have primary and foreign keys that link tables together by certain, um, certain columns. The next few slides deal with uh, user interface mockups or UI. Uh, some of the prototypes included help to show the users and the program how the system is expected to perform and look. Windows layout diagrams are also used because they resemble the actual user interface that the end user will eventually receive. Like I said, some of the UI mockups that we are shown here are uh, current stock, low stock, order stock, add and remove stock, and completing a sale. Now they may not look all that fancy, but there's a fine line between packing too much and too little into a screen. And that doesn't mean that this is going to be the final uh, user interface development but it gives you a good idea of what to expect. Uh, moving on, the physical architecture diagram describes what hardware and software are needed to support the system. And as you can see, this is fairly self-explanatory. It shows what our specifications are for our hardware and network, special software and operating system when it comes to a server and our standard client like the computer that we're going to be using to operate our software. And finally, it's important to define what software will run on each component and to create a list of hardware that is needed to support the system. As you can see, we have several different examples here, such as the customer term, customer terminal, uh, the office or manager PC, the printer, catch register, they're all linked. And that is the end of my presentation. I'll forward it on to the next person. Thank you. My name is Nico, and I'll be telling you about the implementation stage of our development. For our organizational structure, we will be implementing navigational controls such as a content section, an index section, a text search function, and an agent search function. The content section will contain an introduction for new users and a list with descriptions of features in the system. The types of topics included will be how-tos, such as how to ring up a customer, how to clock in, and how to check inventory. The types of commands included will be copy, paste, delete, and move. The terms defined will include stock, inventory, credit, debit, and priority shipping. Here is an example of how some of our how-tos will be structured. The testing phase will begin with unit testing of the individual classes utilizing the black box method of testing. The test will be based mainly on CRC cards. There will be multiple failure tests in place to try and get the software to break. 
One example will be to check out a customer without them having ordered anything or print a receipt before the transaction is complete. The next phase of testing will focus on integration. Due to the relatively small size of this system, two testers will be adequate. Each use case scenario will be tested. Also, all available options and menus within the user interface will be tested to ensure they are functioning as expected. The server will also be tested to ensure customers' data is being saved and backed up correctly. Any changes that have been made due to this testing will also be tested to ensure that no new errors have risen. The interface from a usability and friendliness standpoint will also be tested by a third-party representative. This will ensure the UI and functionality of the POS system is consistent and user-friendly to novice and experienced employees alike. Even though there will likely only be a couple of customer transactions and server transactions going on at one time, we will also test the system to find out what its peak operating efficiency is. We will also test any tutorials or help reference materials and do security testing. Once the software is nearly complete, we will initiate an alpha test for the employees. We will use mock data and ask the employees for any feedback. Once the alpha test is complete and any changes have been made, the beta test will be administered using actual data during a normal workday. For our conversion strategy, we will be using modular conversion. While this may take additional time and resources, it will go over much easier for the employees and help lower the risk from changing to a much more modern system. The first module will be installing the wireless network for the systems to run on and use. This will also come with the training necessary to teach all of the employees how to use the network and how to do it safely. The second module to be introduced will be the point of sale system so the employees can start ringing up customers with the new system as soon as possible. The third module to be introduced will be the inventory system. The store will be closed for one to two days to get all of the books input into the new system and all of the employees taught on how to add new books to the system, as well as navigate through the system to find books customers may be looking for and request new titles to be added to the store. The final module to be introduced will be the customer satisfaction system. This system will monitor any reviews given to better books and allow management to reply to them and reward the employee who is delivering the best experience to the customers. Our post-implementation activities will start with refreezing the company and attempting to get the employees not only comfortable with the system but confident with it as well. Since we have a small organization, we will use on-demand training from the system developer team or operations group. For system maintenance, we will only need a small team as the entire system is essentially a single server, two or three terminals, and a printer. System change requests can be submitted easily and quickly thanks to the small scope of the system and will be brought to the attention of an operations group member or the boss owner of our company as quickly as possible. My name is Luke Christensen and I'll be telling you about the lessons that we learned. First, we learned about the amount of work that goes into completing a team project. Even when managing our time properly and breaking up the tasks equally, we still had to work together to coordinate everything getting done. While working on a team does take a little more effort than just working alone, the scale of what we can complete is much larger as a team. Another wee lesson we learned is to be flexible with each other's strengths, weaknesses, and varying schedules. We also learned that we had to be willing to ask each other questions and seek guidance from each other because if one person was struggling, the whole team was struggling. We also saw that we can work things out as a team rather than have to go someone in charge. Another important lesson that we learned was to have clear ideas in the beginning. Once we all had a clear vision for our project, it made all other assignments fall into place much easier. Having clearly defined team roles and responsibilities also helped because we knew what each team member had to do for each part of the project.